I know there are some electrolyte mixes that have stevia as a component uh, to make that sweet with the electrolytes, but they don't want to put sugar in the electrolytes because people are probably using these electrolytes for keto because they don't have a postprandial insulin response and their electrolytes are all messed up. The simple solution is just to eat more carbohydrates, guys, and then your body will retain salt and it'll retain the sodium, the chloride, the magnesium, the potassium, all of it will work just fine if you get that postprandial insulin signal. I've spoken about that in the past. So um, stevia can be in those sorts of things. Stevia can be in quote unquote healthy foods. Stevia is in a lot of these keto healthy junk foods, quote unquote, I'm making air quotes. Again, I don't think any of this is good food for humans. Um, the other ones, sucralose, aspartame, ACE-K are in things like Coke, Coke Zero, Diet Coke. Um, they're in all sorts of highly processed foods that I hope most of you are avoiding, but maybe you're trying to do the right thing. Maybe you're diabetic or you're obese and you're trying to lose weight by cutting calories. Refer to the videos I've done on how to lose weight, which don't include <laughs> cutting calories. But in fact, uh, I would urge you to focus on improving your food quality. So again, I don't know why people are eating artificial sweeteners, but I want to make the strong case that there is no reason to do this. Not even if you're diabetic, there's no reason to have artificial sweeteners in your diet, not even stevia. So let's dive into research suggesting that these things are harmful for humans. I want to start with stevia, then I will go straight to sucralose. And I think that is perhaps the most interesting article on sucralose. But I think stevia is probably the one that most of you guys are eating, believing it's benign. But I would recommend that you consider articles like this, anti-quorum sensing activity of stevia extracts, steviocide, rebucide, uh, rebodioside A, it's also called Reb A, and they're A glycon steviol. So all the stevia extracts and all these Reb A things, um, it has an anti-quorum sensing activity as clearly shown in this paper from 2020. What is quorum sensing? Quorum sensing is all the bacteria in your gut text messaging each other, which is a good thing. So the problem is that stevia and most of these artificial sweeteners, there's another paper I will show you from Nature looking at saccharin, ACE-K, aspartame, and sucralose are all disrupting the gut flora. They're disrupting the way the gut flora communicates with each other, which leads to imbalances in levels of different gut flora and in this paper, they didn't look at glucose intolerance in people who were eating stevia, but they did look at quorum sensing, which is the way that bacteria in your gut communicate. But in other papers, in both mice and humans, they show that these other artificial sweeteners, in the Nature paper I will show you, they did not look at stevia, will cause glucose intolerance, worsening of your insulin sensitivity by disrupting the gut flora. There's other mechanisms in the sucralose paper, which I will show you in a moment as well. But I'll read from the abstract. Uh, in general, regulation of microbial behavior is known to depend highly on signaling molecules via quorum sensing pathways. This is also true for the gut microbial community. We therefore evaluated the possible role of these stevia-based natural, quote-unquote, sweeteners on this bacterial communication pathway. Purified stevia extracts, including steviacide, Reb A, and steviol, revealed a molecular interaction, possible interruption of gram-negative bacterial communication via either the LAS-R or RH1R receptor, our in silico analysis suggests a competitive type inhibitory role for steviol, while Reb I and steviocide likely to inhibit LAS are mediated quorum sensing in a non competitive manner. The results suggest the need for further safety studies on the agents. Yeah, I would say so. This is from 2020, and stevia is in so many foods, guys. And the potential that this stevia, which certainly appears to be the most, quote, air quotes, benign of any of these, but I still wouldn't eat it, and I do not eat it at all is going to disrupt quorum sensing communication between the bacteria in your gut. That's not a good thing. You don't want that happening. It's going to cause imbalance in the gut flora. This, I think, is something we will begin to understand more as we move on, but I would avoid anything with stevia in it for these reasons. I just don't think there's any reason to consume foods that have stevia in them. These are all processed in some way, even if they're labeled as keto or low carb. I would urge you guys, don't fear the carbohydrates. I used to, and I've tried to not be ossified, calcified, and just continue to learn, um, but that doesn't do well when you're uh, part of dogmatic communities who then uh, turn on you, as we know. But uh, anyway, 